Okay, this is June 17, 2021 here in Kitchener, Ontario, Zone 5. And we're just looking at some of my plantings out here in my driveway. I've got this very giant, um, I'm not sure the name of this, but very beautiful giant hosta surging forth here. And uh, because of its bulk, it has pushed out these lavender shrubs. These are old, tired lavender shrubs, but they're putting out new, gro new, uh, new flowers here. The, I think the combo there with that silvery foliage and the purple, the striking purple blossoms with this lime green hosta and then the blue spruce. I really love the way the way that works here. There's a few volunteer lavenders coming up. I don't think I planted that lavender. Um, and I know I've seen from time to time lavender coming up from the cracks here. Yeah, there we go. There's one. So these old plants, I don't know if they've got uh, maybe a few more seasons in them, but I think they're going to keep giving in the form of new plants. Mostly what I've got in these cracks here is columbine. You can see tons of columbine coming up. Here's one that's flowered. And then I've got, you know, just uh, moss flocks, creeping thyme. There's one little hosta buried in there. I'll need to rescue that somehow this uh, angelica sedum. There's uh, some some kind of ivy, Baltic ivy, growing up in here. So I really like this little uh, set, you know, armor stone uh, retaining wall here at the entrance to my, uh, my walkway. But the thing I really want to talk about in this video is my container layout. This is container layout phase two. A couple weeks ago I did a video called something like container layout first pass. So this is second pass of the container layout. It's not really finished, but um, we'll go through the whole garden and look at how I've got everything set up. It's much, much improved now, and I think there will be a third pass to finish it. But um, to start with here, out in my, in my front yard, in my driveway area, I've got a few of these little troughs. They've showed up in a lot of my previous videos. Uh, they were seeded back in uh, maybe April, maybe March, um, with various things, and some of them came up well, some of them didn't. And so I've adjusted uh, the plantings. And without going into any great detail here, we've got this, you know, one beautiful lettuce plant. That's a volunteer lettuce that I've just allowed to go. And boy, boy, does she look nice. Um, and then just some kales here that I've transplanted. And this was one of the failure containers. The only thing that really worked in here was, as I fall down the stairs, the only thing that really worked in here was that volunteer lettuce. So um, it got replanted with some other kales. This is the uh, the rutabaga container. They're looking good. I hope I get actual rutabaga roots out of, or bulbs out of there. Um, but again, not going into detail on what, what all these plants are, but I like having this uh, little setup here on the walkway. The low terracotta troughs, a couple planters of peppers, these little pepper tubs interspersed between these little troughs, which are randomly planted with greens. So, you know, Lacinato kale, scarlet kale, um, there's some red chard in there. And then over on this side, we've got, uh, this planter is still kind of coming online. It's full of uh, compost materials, this low wood planter. Uh, but I've got, the, in the spaces between the planters, I've got a couple more of these little low uh, plastic terracotta troughs, that I call them. And in here, I think this is, um, that must be the Purple Vienna uh, kohlrabi. Uh, these beds, I'll do a detailed video on these beds, but it's mainly just greens, mixed greens. Um, oh, and some, very importantly, some okra coming back here. I've got this nice deep, nice deep soil volume for those deep tap-rooted okra. Uh, so yeah, just greens in here, but uh, interspersed with these little troughs. And I should come in with a rake or a broom and clean this all up. I haven't really been out here. I tend to neglect the driveway. But these plants, we got it. We had a little bit of a rain earlier today, so these are not looking as neglected as they were. They're looking lush and happy, and looking forward to this all filling in. Again, um, okra, okra, okra. But this is not, you know, this is not container layout. Normally, I have some containers set up here, more than you know, multiple of them. Um, but I'm a little undercapitalized on my containers this year. I didn't have quite enough plants nor soil to fill them all. So for now, there's just this one tomato. This uh, green zebra tomato, well on its way. Um, you know, need to top up the soil there, which I'll, you know, it's 
I'll probably remove that lower leaf, remove those suckers, and then uh, top up that soil. It doesn't have the proper cage. We'll look at the other containers. That what the there should be a proper square cage in there, but I don't know, I don't have enough cages, even to do all my uh, my plants. But anyway, that's containers in the driveway. And as we now leave the driveway, come into the back section of the yard. Let's shut the door on that nice piece of earth moving equipment. We'll come out into the main uh, main patio garden, the backyard. Um, part of the container layout definitely is this section here, these aluminum workbench things. They're not the prettiest things, but they definitely hold up to the weather and they kind of look, I don't know, I guess they look kind of sleek and, and futuristic maybe. They're not, they're not too ugly. Uh, especially once they're all surrounded with these other plants. I've got this one little container here of catnip, um, and then these, you know, this, this bowl and this shallow tray, and that's, I don't know, a bird feeder, a bird bath, a, you know, some place to dunk my hands. It's not really um, it's, you know, a decorative thing. I don't know what that is, but that's set up there like that. Um, and then we've got these tomato containers. You can see here, this is the proper cage that I like to use for these containers, this square cage. And this this cage is just a little bit bigger than this container. So to fit it in, I've bent the bottom rail to narrow the profile at the bottom so I can get a perfect fit. And then I just tuck, you know, I bend it down so that it's covered by the soil and the mulch. So we've got, you know, a, you know, tomato there, three peppers here along that bench, another tomato here. They're raised up on these breeze blocks to create kind of a nice level. Uh, eggplant and uh, cayenne pepper here. So that's a nice little row. That's a finished row of containers. I like that that setup, and that'll just kind of become a wall of green as the season progresses. Uh, you know, again with these tomatoes, I need to top up the soil level right to the top, but I'm kind of scavenging soil from wherever I can find it at this point. Uh, swinging all the way over here, this is kind of a neglect zone. Um, these containers, they were elsewhere. They were, you know, I set them up earlier in the season. They didn't really do that well. Um, don't need to talk in any detail about what's in them, but it's it's nothing very precious. Uh, there might be something here that I can kind of clean up and rescue and recover, but um, they're most. This is mostly just a neglect section. I'll probably what I'll do is I'll just dump the soil out and uh, maybe try and replant those containers again. I, you know, I'm trying to recover soil, so those are most valuable now for their soil. This was leeks in this thing. The, um, they got attacked somehow, so I just snipped them off at the top. And now they're not going to flower. They're not going to do, you know, they're not giving me greens. They're not, I don't know, they're just kind of hanging on. I'm hoping that the bulbs will divide. But anyway, that's the neglect corner. That's not the beautiful section. Here now we're starting to get into the much more beautiful finished stuff. Um, I've taken all the, there was, this was had kind of its spring setup, which <laughs> mainly consisted of those containers and some other ones. That were, not, that were looking pretty poor. So I've cleaned that all up. I've taken everything out of here, and now I really like this section. It's dominated by this, in this uh, wooden Ikea barrel, this pail, decorative pail. I've got this artichoke plant, beautiful silver, silvery, uh, fuzzy foliage there. Um, and that's a convenient spot for my, uh, my spot beam. And then I've just got an assortment of little, you know, some of my, snake plants. I've got some larger snake plants in here and I intersperse those snake plants. They're in ceramic or clay containers and I just kind of intersperse them all throughout the container layout. Um, as we come around, you know, at this far corner here we have the least good pot but I think it is a good pot so I've included it in the good section of the container layout. There's a kale in here that's uh, it's flowering, but it's going to get back to producing greens soon. So if I if I clean up this pot, and there's a couple of nice things in there. There's a mustard that's going to go away. There's um, there's a fennel in there I might try and keep. There's a parse or what is that? That's a cilantro that's looking shabby. It's probably I'll let that go to flower. And there's a catnip here, and I've got so much of that I might remove it or I might just leave it for the uh, the uh, cats to destroy. We've got the this low container of ginger root here. Um, which I think looks okay enough to include in this section. Uh, you know, snake plant, hosta, some kind of overwintered. Um, this is, I guess, a scarlet kale. And then this nice little container that I've got uh, an assortment of special brassicas. This is Brussels sprout, 
This is, I think, a uh, purple Sicily cauliflower. Uh, that's probably a Romanesco cauliflower, and that there is a Calabrese. And in the middle, we've got a uh, red Reuben basil plant making this nice little container there. And so I think, you know, I like the, uh, I like the color scheme. I like this, you know, I could fit a few more containers in here, but right now this is nice and clean. Um, can easily see the, the layout of the brickwork and the, uh, the stones. I'll mention also that this, so this middle section, this is sort of, I call this my dry riverbed, this sort of this gravel pit, this drainage, this terraced drainage feature with, uh, with these stepping stones. And in this bottom section, I've completely renewed it. So over time, this becomes full of sand and things, you know, all kinds of weeds like to grow in it. So I dug this out down about four inches and sifted and cleaned, which was a, 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 an annoying task, but I sifted and cleaned some of the stones and then I had a whole bunch of new stones that I could top, uh, top the thing up with a fresh, clean layer. And I think it looks really sharp. Love that look. Um, this top layer has not been done. I've just barely, you know, I've pulled some weeds, but you can see it's all full of sticks and stuff. There's still some weeds coming up. There's some interesting things in here. Um, this looks like a cedar. There's some kind of maybe a spruce or a juniper. Uh, there's this ajuga coming up in here. The ajuga, you know, the ajuga is not so precious. Here there's a, uh, I think that's a delphinium that I'm going to allow to flower there. Uh, here in this new section I've allowed, uh, the ajuga is what I've kept and there's some borage volunteering there and I've kept that, but otherwise completely removed all the weeds from this section and I will do this section shortly, but you can just see the difference there and how, how nice and clean I think how beautiful this bottom section, totally clean, looks really slick. And then this top section, just at a subconscious level, it's much more of a mess and kind of doesn't feel as nice at the corner of your eye. Anyway, coming to the left-hand side of the dry riverbed, leaving off from the, uh, the nightshade row, um, I've kind of got, you know, this, this side has these, these hostas which grow and grow and grow. This, uh, the dry riverbed interrupts this flow of hostas, this bed of hostas. Now interrupted by the dry riverbed, hostas flowing across. And these uh, basic species hosta, um, these are the fragrant ones, they produce the white flowers, very fragrant, beautiful. These are huge, they just keep growing and growing and encroaching. So as much as I would like to have containers up along that little stone ledge, I really can't do it and I have to have things kind of, uh, either very large plants that will um, you know, be able to hold their own against the hosta and outgrow it and overtop it, or just push all the plants out, you know, further out. So anyway, I've got this set up um, with uh, just, that's a, a decorative hosta. I've got a croton. In the middle here, I've got a eggplant. I've got some snake plants. There's another collection of overwintered kales back in there and I'm using that container for another little spotlight to light the uh, the path for path lighting and I've got these solar these little this is a good product actually I highly recommend it it's just it comes with the lid and it's a string light and you provide your own jar so pick whatever jars you like and that's a really high quality product it's sealed the water can't get in there um, I'm really really loving that this year and then just coming around here through this section. What I've done here is taking a cue from the colors in these, uh, in these crotons, the red, the green, the yellow. Um, I've decided that in this whole section I'll go with that sort of Rasta color scheme, the red, green, yellow, black. And so all the containers in here kind of follow those colors. The terracotta, we've got Again, the croton here, picking it up, you know, dark green on that container, light green, a little sparkle of light green back there, uh, black, um, and just this, this row here of little tiny containers, you know, at the front to kind of hide. Everything's kind of stepped, you know, high stuff at the back, stepping down to the front, and I'm trying to hide these square containers. Again, following the color scheme, we've got the red, that sparkle of red back there, hidden by all this foliage. We've got a little, you know, a black container, if you can call a sparkle of black. And then just this row of, 
trying to not have two of the same container nor two of the same plant side by side. The pattern is for there to be no pattern. And back in here, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a setup with the breeze block elevating a kind of a decorative lantern, getting some of these these crotons elevated up out of the sun into the shade of the into the shade of the grapevine where they prefer not to be blasted with the sun. They show better colors and they don't the leaves don't scorch. And uh, yeah, just coming around a mix of decorative and cropping plants that I'm hoping is going to be a zucchini in there. We've got. Um, another artichoke in there that has gone to flower. Um, this I'll talk about this red trough actually. This is supposed to be a kind of a, a feature. Again, a four of a kind. We've got of special brassicas. We've got the Romanesco, the Brussels sprouts, the I guess this is going to be the Sicily purple uh, cauliflower, and then here the uh, the Calabrese, which unfortunately went went to flower much too early, and I'll just allow it. Um, here is sort of nightshades tucked up against the wall. There's a tomato in the back Properly caged square cage needs its soil topped up. You can see the bent wire how I've bent those wires to allow it to fit in the bottom of the cage or into the uh, Allow the bottom of the cage to fit into the container We've got an eggplant in here peppers Another tomato another zucchini I'll talk about what I've done with this tomato. The um, when it rains, I tend to get all kinds of downpour dripping right off that corner. So I've done stone on the front edge of this so that you know hopefully the stone won't splash out as much as the mulch will. So I think that looks kind of cool, the uh, half and half mulch and stone. And so let's just step back and survey that little section, the Rasta section. I think looks totally awesome as it wraps the corner. It's got the mix of uh, tea light candles, solar light, and um, lanterns, decorative lanterns. Uh, this middle section here, this was more chaotic. It looks, still looks pretty chaotic, but it was more chaotic. I've kind of cleaned it up quite a bit. Immediately it started to become chaotic again as I started to pile this yard waste, but for now it's pretty clean, pretty open. I've just got this one kind of silly container off the corner here. I don't love that, but it's providing... First of all, it's got dill growing out of it, so it's somewhat of a successful container. Um, it's slightly undercapitalized. And it's also got my little, uh, again, path lighting spotlights here, so I'm allowing that to remain. Um, wrapping around the raised beds, we've got these larger... You know, each one kind of takes a square foot, square foot footprint, so I can get four of them across the four foot front of this raised bed. And just, you know, herbs on the corner. I'm using the um, the broken breeze block with the clipped corner to create that, that easement there so that I'm not catching my foot on a, on a sharp corner of breeze block. And then, yeah, just mixing it up to different colors, different shapes, trying to not have a pattern to the pattern. So we've got the olive, the terracotta, the black, the white, back to the terracotta again. And this is just a pepper, eggplant, tomato, and some herbs. Here we've got, you know, a similar thing. We've got this, this row of troughs, kind of creating a, uh, an extra square foot on the bed there. That's all chards and stuff, and so that's kind of a, a foundational thing. Those are all identical. We're not there. I think it's, you know, I'm not always trying to not have a pattern. There, I think it looks awesome to have the repeating pattern. So, repeating pattern there, picking up the same color with the terracotta container here for this little eggplant, and then back to breaking up the pattern. So. The, uh, the gray, the, the uh, slightly faded terracotta, the black, the white, um, pepper, eggplant, tomato. This is not really part of the container layout, but it's influencing the container layout. Normally I would have a plant, you know, another container right there, because this, there's enough space for it without compromising my ability to walk through here. But um, I've got this squash plant that decided to grow up right in that spot, to volunteer in that spot. And I think I'm going to try and keep it. I'm going to train it along this strip of soil here. You can see I've got it stapled down, where I hope it will start rooting from the stem. But I'm just going to I'm just going to keep stapling it along here, and eventually maybe there'll be a uh, a squash running through here. Uh, but so normally the container layout here would start there and then proceed through these these elevated containers. Again, these are this is the sunny section. I want to have my good my nice big nightshades in their nice big containers out here in the sun. So 
Uh, we've got a nice big pepper, tomato, eggplant, and then on the corner there, another herb, another truncated breeze block, so I'm not catching my foot on it. Here's a neglect section of the container setup. So this is not really uh, not really perfect here. This is just a bunch of rhubarbs in containers. Oh, look at this. Uh, we've got this rose campion out in front. Beautiful, starting to come into flower. I've got those all scattered around. We've got one tucked back here, just coming out of that little fringe of soil. Putting a pop of color on the corner of the bed here, so I love that. We've got this uh, evening primrose flowering now this time of year. So this is a kind of a nice section, but um, it should have a kind of a nice you know, container display here. And I really need to just rethink how this whole thing is working because it's not, it's not perfect right now. Uh, another kind of just neglect section here. This is a kind of a shady spot where I can have some things in containers so they don't dry out. And there's just, um, you know, that's like a working section. It's not a beautiful section. Th that stuff shouldn't be there. It should just be a clear walkway, but for now it's doing a job. Um, we can look at the beautiful stone layout in here. Just take a glimpse at that. If the sun glare is not too great. And I need to get into the shade because my phone is complaining. We can quickly come back here to this shady section, another neglect section. Just lots of containers that I don't really know what to do with. They're kind of in the shade here where they can just grow slowly and not be too much of a problem. I'm a little bit organized with this one tray of things for transplanting. And, you know, I've kind of separated. We had this winter sowing experiment. Most of the, everything here was a failure and it didn't work. Um, everything here, these little containers, they all actually, uh, something came up in them. So I've got those set aside and maybe I will be able to make some use of them. Um, and then here's the, the really nice section. I love this section of the container layout. So starting here and sweeping all the way through the new section of patio, I've kind of done a, a blue theme here. I've eliminated or I've omitted any kind of terracotta or orange or red. I've only gone with these neutral gray or these bright, these jewel tone or these kind of pastel sky blue, um, kind of turqu turquoise colors. And uh, just here's like a, a brown pot, fairly neutral brown pot, but it's got that blue fringe on it. Um, just, you know, really bright jewel tone, royal blue back there. So just for the containers here, I've kind of, oh, the, you know, I've done a contrast thing here, the white container with the turquoise saucer beside the turquoise uh, plastic tub. Again, a zucchini tub. And hopefully I can get a good zucchini out of these small tubs, but uh, I think I can, you know, if I could just get one fruit, that's, that's cool. And so all my, I've, I tend to have a lot of these decorative blue containers, which I think don't look that great um, scattered throughout the yard. They can look okay, but all together here, all the blue all together here, I think looks really cool. And, you know, what inspired it was really just these cages. Um, I just have, I have these very large tubs here for these uh, Himalayan carrots, these cannabis plants. I have these large tubs, and so I happen to have three large tubs and three blue cages and I set it up and it just the pop of blue back here looked so cool I thought I would do all my blue containers to uh, really push the point so just you know this is kind of one vantage as you enter into it all the blue and I love the pattern of the shadows on the stones anyway this is the, let me step out here and walk back through it from this angle. This is the second pass of the patio garden container layout. And I think, oh, I'll talk about this. This, uh, I don't think this is, I keep, keep calling this a caryopteris. I don't think it is. I think it's actually a, uh, a Walker's Low cat mint, um, but doesn't look great with these little blue flowers. This is a Boulevard Rescue, and I'm so glad I did because it looks so cool with the blue zone color scheme. So anyway, walking back through, just enjoying the afternoon sun here. And what I think is a pretty nice 
maybe final layout. Which I might tweak a little bit. There'll be a third pass to, to iron out the kinks, but for now, I think it's looking great. We'll end it here. See you in the next one.